Good morning. Good morning. Um, an old, old friend contacted me this week. I mean, an old friend, like from college days. She had stumbled across me on Facebook and she's been following Unity. So she's, you know, at a... Hmm. Ah, excuse me just a minute while I... Thank you. Um, so she's got some challenges in her life. She's getting old. She's old. She's my age, you know, and including a health challenge. And she's finding that her current faith path is not serving her and giving her the support and the answers that she needs. So she asked me, how do I do it? How do I stay so happy? How do I stay so healthy? How do I stay so young? I loved her. <laughs> she wanted to know how I could do that. And she said, what is it that you believe? What is it you believe? And I said, what do I believe? My goodness, what a question. She wanted to know, do I believe in evil? Do I believe in a devil? What's my idea of God? Do, we, do I believe that disease is a punishment from God? Do I believe in the need for forgiveness, for salvation, for confession? All those things. And what about healing? And she knows that we do the metaphysical network and we often sponsor various healers of different modalities and alternatives. And she said, what about that? Do I believe all that stuff? And I said, you know, some people, every speaker who comes who has a different healing modality or, or theory, there's some people who avidly follow them and are just in love with this, this particular um, modality and others who poo poo, that's not scientific. Because the ones who follow it are the ones that it works for. You know, I've seen it in action, this works for me. And then that somebody else says, ah, you can't prove it, it's not true. And she said, do I believe all that stuff? And I said, well, I, you know, I don't disbelieve anything because I've seen all sorts of things work. And, you know, there's part of me, I'm equally scientifically minded and metaphysically minded. You know, I argue, I want to be credible. I want to have common sense. I want people to think I'm logical. But I also want to believe in a lot of this woo-woo stuff. So I said, for me, the bottom line is, I believe that whatever you believe becomes true for you. And that actually is unity's teaching. Whatever you believe becomes true for you. Your mind, the power of your mind, your mind is creator. So in the beginning, in the beginning was the word, right? And the word was with God. You've probably heard that. So in the very beginning of no time, before the Big Bang or not, there was only God whatever God is, and the word. And there was nothing else, just God and word. Some people now metaphysically might translate that as conscious and subconscious mind. Word is the conscious mind speaking into the subconscious mind, which automatically, anyway, that's pretty advanced, but some people might say that. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And God created by thinking. But there was nothing else. There was no material, no flesh, no cells, no, nothing with which to create except itself, this essence that is God. And therefore, everything that has ever been created, ever will be created, is created of God's stuff by the action of mind. That's why unity, we talk about the law of mind action, right? That we are made we are God stuff walking around here. We're made in the image of God and likeness of God. We are God stuff. You, right there, God. And the word is with you. Yes, the word was with God and you were God. So the word is with you. The creative word, the powerful creative word, infinitely powerful. Faith to move mountains. So strong your word is. Whether you want to believe that anybody ever moved a mountain or whether it's metaphor, we're going to get to metaphors later. Some people's truth is 
that we have to ask God for healing and God heals us. Others think that healing is strictly scientific, what's proven in the laboratory. And again, I say that whatever you believe becomes true for you. Do you believe that prayer can heal? Yes, then prayer can heal you. Do you believe that prayer cannot heal and only science can heal? And prayer cannot heal you. It isn't the prayer that creates the healing. It's the belief in the prayer that creates the healing, that causes the prayer to heal. Just like our belief in the doctor, in the medication, in the prescription, in the surgery, causes us to believe that we are healed. Because you know, some people have surgery and they're not healed. Some people take a medication and they're not healed. Yes, it's our belief. So you're all familiar, I'm sure, with the placebo effect. Now placebos work because the person taking the placebo believes that they may be healed by that placebo. If the person believes that they're not healed by that placebo, they're not. But the same is true of the prescription drug that they're testing against it. Some people are healed by it and some are not. What's the common thread? Do they believe they're being healed by this prescription drug? Not all placebos work. Not all prescriptions work. Now, I'm not saying stop taking your medication and stop consulting your doctor. I'm not saying that at all. Because we're all on a journey of learning. And we have to work at whatever, whatever level we're at. We don't expect a first grade child to understand 10th grade algebra. Although some of them obviously do, apparently. <laughs> and we don't expect someone just becoming aware of their power to heal themselves to suddenly heal advanced cancer. Although some do, some do. We've all heard these stories of miraculous. Because, come on in, Laurel. Even these scientifically proven remedies don't work sometimes. Why is it they don't work sometimes if it's scientifically proven? Well, it's not the stuff out there that does things to us, it's the stuff in here. And if that stuff out there can help us get to that in here, then so much the better. For instance, scientific evidence proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that smoking causes lung cancer. Yes? Why is it that not everybody who smokes gets lung cancer? It's not beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's a doubt there. There's still a doubt there. Where does the doubt come from? You want anything to get beyond a shadow of a doubt, this doubt has to be removed from our minds. So we all know, and that's, that's why we sang Ready for a Miracle today, right? Because we remove the doubt from our mind. We all know that when we get a paper cut on our finger, it heals itself, right? A little cut, no problem. Our body can heal that. So what size cut can the body heal? Quarter inch, not a problem. Half inch, seven eighths of an inch, an inch, an inch and a quarter. At some point, totally up to you, you look at that cut and say, this is too big for my body to heal itself. I have to go have it sewn up and wrapped up and stitched up. Yes? When is that? We all know that our bones don't heal themselves. We have to go to the doctor and have it set and all wrapped up in plaster cast, right? So this belief that our body can only heal so, so big a cut, where does that come from? Well, it comes from all sorts of different places, of course. It comes from our parents, our families, our teachers, our government, our media, our religion. They all give us beliefs that limit things. Do you think your parents or your government ever told you, gave you a belief that turned out to be not quite true? especially these days? And don't our religions do that sometimes? When I was in high school, I had a friend who was an athlete, a track athlete, and she was a hurdler. And the two of us were out on the field one afternoon after school practicing, and she tripped and fell over the hurdle. And she went down hard, I mean, really hard. And the way she fell, I was pretty sure she had broken her leg. And I ran over to her, I was the only one there. 
and she was all scraped all down the side of her leg you know the skin scraped away and you know how that yellowy stuff oozes out and there was a cut and there was some blood and I ran to her and she said just leave me and it's a good thing I was the only one there not the teacher and the coach and the other rest of the class because they'd have hauled her off to the hospital I'm sure but she said just leave me and so I sat down beside her on the grass and she lay on the track and she was absolutely quiet and absolutely still and I was concerned, but I could see that she was breathing regularly. And so I just sat. And after about 20 minutes, she stood up and she brushed the gravel that was embedded in this sore, brushed it off her legs, and there was no sign of any illness. Her skin was completely healed. My friend was a Christian scientist and she had been taught all her life that when she heard herself, she sat down, she was still, she connected with the power inside. She was taught that the power that grew her body maintained and healed her body. And that's what she did. She'd never been to a doctor in her life. She sat there, she went within, and she directed that power that grew her body to heal her body. And that's the secret of the avatars, including Jesus was that they could go within, connect with that power within, and know, and remember the power of the body to heal itself. And the healing the body is just one example of the power of our mind, the power of our minds to create. Our minds can create unimaginable, no, they can't create unimaginable things. They can only create anything we can imagine. Anything we can imagine, they can create. And they do. So even if you're subconsciously imagining something and fretting and worrying about something, your mind's going into it. Did you ever feel like you could maybe slip into insanity? Is there anybody else who ever gets that feeling? <laughs> that I'm just on the point and if I just let go, I could lose it? Anybody? Come on, be honest. Because I do that. And then I remember that I have a choice. <clears throat> You know, if I do that, sure, I don't have to be responsible anymore. But on the other hand, I don't get to do this. So I decide not to do it consciously. And probably many more times I've done that unconsciously, right? Am I depressed or am I just feeling sorry for myself? You know, let's not go that way. And I just choose not to go there. Every time I experience pain, I know some of you are with me on this. I wonder if I've got cancer. Do you? Of course you do. And then I say to myself, I'm, not, I'm just going to put that thought away. Because I really believe that if I thought that often enough and wondered that often enough, I would create a cancer. So I let it go. And I often say to myself, hmm, I wonder how many cancers I've healed just by letting it go. Because I know that when I attach belief and emotion to a thought, that thought must manifest. Yeah? So you have a thought, you just let it pass through. But as soon as you start attaching emotion to that, the, that thought and belief to it, it starts to manifest. The law of mind action, again, so that to always choice. So we say, just do it, just choose, just say so. And I know that that seems like a monumental quantum leap, just like just believing that our body can heal itself. By just saying so, it's a huge leap of belief. But it really is that simple and that hard. You know how hard it is to be simple sometimes? You can believe this stuff just so far, and then there's a limit. At least that's true for me. True for you? There's a limit to just, at some point we come to the, I, there's something that's beyond my control. I can't do this. But where does that limit come from? comes from here. The limit is up to you, me. So how do we get past our limits? We do that by knowing that the power is not outside ourselves, but inside ourselves. The creative power is in us, in our word. Not God, not doctors, not karma, not hormones, not disease, not anything. Yes, there is a power in the universe 
that is stronger than I am. Of course there is. But that power in the universe, the thing is, the universe is in here. This is where it's all happening. The power in the universe that is greater than me, the ego me, the sense consciousness me, that's in here too. That's my higher consciousness. Everything is happening in here. My mind is a creation machine. Now, sometimes when we talk about healing our bodies and what causes injury and disease, some people feel like we're criticizing or condemning them for being sick, for causing their own sickness or injury. No, no, this is a huge error thought and it's the primary pitfall of this new thought teaching. They think we're blaming them for their own illness. No. And again, I've said so many times before, we have to look at the difference between blame and responsibility. See, blame is disempowering. Responsibility is empowering you. You know, we take responsibility for what we create. If we know that we can create, then we can uncreate and we can recreate. It's empowering to take responsibility and be responsible for our own life experience and our own creations. We have to take responsibility. But responsibility, like so many other things, when we first realize this, you know how we go preaching to our friends and our family and saying things like, what's in your consciousness that you created this? You know that one? We can't be responsible for anybody else. We can't make anybody else be responsible. We have to let them get there by themselves. We can't force anybody to be loving or kind and sharing, you know, just this is the only place that change can happen. This is the only place that creation can be happening. And it's all lessons to be learned, you know? That's what our whole human experience is all about. It's one big lesson to learn. You get to choose what your lesson is. You're responsible for yourself. You can't change anyone else. You can't make anyone else be responsible. You can only show them how. And that's your job. That's your assignment, your homework. Show those you care for and love, show them how. Don't preach at them. It's my job. <laughs> Just show them how. Somebody left a pamphlet on the front steps of Unity last week. And it was from a fundamentalist Christian organization. And it said that we would have to account for, to God for all our thoughts and actions. And it was a cartoon format. And there was a picture of a man sitting in a pew in church and the little bubble, you know, that he was wondering who won the, the ball game instead of listening to the sermon. And he was going to have to answer to God for that. And there was a picture of a man looking out the window and seeing a woman and, and thinking, what a pretty girl. And God was going to have to know about this. And it said that, hmm, said that if God didn't like what was reported about me, you know, when I answered, he didn't like my life, that God was going to actually cast me into a lake of fire for all eternity. Really? This God who created me and gave me free will to make choices and learn lessons, this God that is absolute unconditional love, really? But you know, we say that we automatically account for our actions and our experiences by, by experiencing the natural consequences of the choices we make. That every action, every thought carries its own punishment or reward within it. That God, God doesn't need to forgive anything because God judges nothing. God knows that we are here learning lessons. Sometimes the punishment or reward within each action isn't always obvious at the time, but it is. We learn our lesson. We make our mistakes. We're supposed to make mistakes. We're in school here. So yes, you can find horror stories in the Bible, like the God, who was, was it Isaac? He asked to murder his own child to prove his love for God. I mean, it's like, really? Really? These are, these are metaphors the teachings of the Bible, and to take the Bible literally, I think, is a huge mistake. A metaphor or an allegory is a teaching lesson. All of our stories, 
our fairy tales, our movies. They're all allegories, aren't they? Metaphors, teachings. There's no Darth Vader. There's no Luke Skywalker. There's no Harry Potter. There isn't. There isn't. <laughs> There's not even a Snow White or a handsome prince. They're all <laughs> metaphors to, to demonstrate what could happen if certain choices are made. And that's what the Bible's for. If you, if you want to take lessons from the Bible, there are moral lessons, not truth. So this is the truth that sets us free. The power is within you. What you believe will become true for you. That's the truth. And that's what I told my friend. I wonder how she's doing. Will you join me in a meditation now? I invite you to just become comfortable where you're sitting and allow your body to just be the way it is knowing that your breath is at work, that your very breath, inspiration, is maintaining your body, that inherent in your being as a human is power, the creative process, the word. When you speak your word, you create a reality and a truth. And so we speak our words, love, beauty, gratitude, generosity, integrity, honesty, Faith, wisdom, and we invite all of these experiences into our experience, knowing as we believe, so it is done, and so it is. <laughs>